Hey Mojoholics, welcome to Inside Watch Mojo, episode 11. As you can see, Ash is back with me this week. Uh, did you get a chance to see last week's show? Uh, technically no, because we're filming this before since you're, in, you're on vacation in Cuba, I believe, as we speak. And I was traveling earlier this week, if you're watching this when it airs. But I can imagine what... Uh, I could imagine what the Mojoholics are going to say when uh, they see last week's show. What? Oh, I'm so confused by the tenses on this. What are they going to say? Well, I think a certain percentage are going to be ecstatic to see Dan and you back, which is the natural reaction. And then I think there's going to be a small percentage who are going to be like, who the hell is this guy? And then they're going to be, you know, replied to by others who say, that's the guy whose voice you hear. Um, and then a very vocal minority trolls are going to come out and say, what is this crap? Give us more top 10 lists. But um, I'm hoping that, you know, over 100,000 people tune in and watch and then we'll accelerate that possible show we're working on, which is kind of like a trivia stump the host. With I love you trivia. And, yeah, that's for later on. I'm so excited. So, uh, so that's your own little private back to the future, going back and forth. In yeah, time. I'm really confused though. I think it might be a really bad time traveler, uh, even though I've watched that movie 300 times. Anyway. I know you wanted to discuss Q1, like the State of the Union, so what is the State of the Union? So to right give now? you a rundown, in March we'll likely get close to 200 million views uh, during the month, which is fantastic. Um, we're, let's start with headcount. So we're about 20 people full-time, as you could see, uh, about 100 uh, freelancers. I'm hoping that in three months when we give you a State of the Union, we'll be 25 to 30 employees full-time. Um, right now we're producing three, uh, sorry, four clips each weekday and five on weekends. We're going to be pushing five out every day at some point in April, hopefully. Uh, we're right now at about 7.25 million subs. Um, and we generate over, you guys generate over 1 billion minutes of watch time each month. So based on those metrics, we're like a top five, top 10, top 20 uh, channel, which is great. And all time, we crossed uh, yesterday 2.75 billion uh, all time views on YouTube. And with our seven and a quarter million subscribers, all time we're like a top 50 channel. Um, and a lot of the channels that are ahead of us are not necessarily updating anymore, they're, or they're like legacy Vivo channels, right. or you know people who no longer produce content. So uh, again, thank you for helping us grow, and hopefully more to come. That is crazy talk. I know that it's only March, but we have had some kind of memorable videos already so far this year. So for better or worse. And every year we produce a top 10 Watch Mojo top 10s of the year. We've done this for the past couple of years. So what, uh, what would have made it already from this year? So for us, the memorable basically means good, bad, and ugly. Yeah. And yeah, you guys kept asking for a top 10 Watch Mojo top 10 list, and we thought that would be a bit vain. So we do like one or two good clips that stand out you guys love. And a lot of things that, you know, it's a shake my head, hit ourselves, dough moments. So this year, um, the one that I think most of you found the state, well, put it to you this way, half of you disliked, found a bit distasteful, the other half liked, thought it was interesting, was top 10 celebrities killed in a car accident, which again is a topic that a lot of publications cover. Right. But I guess doing it in a top 10 format is uh, to be, for no, not to make any, it is distasteful to some. For us, it's like, look, it's a top 10 format. Everything we do is a top 10 format. We were kind of combining um, a number of elements like shock value, how sad people were, the fans outpouring of emotions, and you know where the celebrity was in their life. We, we in, you know, and we can imagine why some people would be upset by that. But we also felt some of you would think we were chicken if all of a sudden we didn't do a top 10 format. Yeah, but I mean, to me, when we do something like you know top 10 notorious Nazis or God I mean, bless the words notorious yeah, and tragic. Yeah, we, we also we had like we had a lot of internal discussions when we did top 10 mass shootings. Yes, that one I think so, was, but that one because there are some kids, I don't want to use the crazy word, but to you know, paraphrase Chris Rock, whatever happened to crazy, there's a lot of crazy kids that get up and go out and shoot a bunch of people. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like, who and cares I, what they were listening I to? I think and people they need be to be now. educated about that. And so that is why, I mean, just because we do it in a top 10, that doesn't mean it's... Look, the bottom line is, if someone gets inspired by a video like that and does that, they were gonna get inspired by something else. It's more important, I find, to highlight and cover this. We don't also wanna be the channel that only does video games and movie explosions. We do wanna, you know, inform and entertain. That's the other half of it. And, uh, you know, if it takes a top 10 format for you guys to care about history, right. for you guys to care about, you know, crimes and, and things, then so be it. But there were others. I think the other ones that so far stand out for being memorable, um, not ugly, but just bad, is sometimes like when we did top 10 actors who do their own stunts, mm -hmm. a few stuntmen and a few hardcore fans emailed us saying, we're disappointed because you're talking about an actor in a movie and showed a given scene, but that wasn't him doing it. And the disconnect there was, the research was, 
airtight and correct, mm -hmm. the script made a lot of sense. We were not saying like, in the scene this guy does it, we were talking about, in general, this actor did some stunts in some movies, but yeah, when we then show it and juxtapose that with certain movies, you guys were fair to call us out. It's because we've kind of trained and conditioned you guys mm -hmm. to always expect the most pertinent, accurate yeah. uh, footage. And in that case, it was a disconnect, so we kind of added annotations and just said internally we have to be more careful right. with that. Yeah, and I think we had kind of a similar problem with uh, military planes. But, Mil yeah, military but it, planes was just one yeah. footage. Oh, yeah, it was just one piece of footage where the we showed, I guess, the wrong plane. But uh, I think on the whole, we nailed that one because it's, yeah. it's definitely not our normal It type wasn't of our area of expertise, no. but we have, we have team, big, of those 100 freelancers, we have people that are interested in many different topics. and Which kind of ties into the suggest tool add ons, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we added a couple of functions. Anyone stand out for you? Uh, you were saying the My Top 10, I think, um, which is kind of just. It's, it's basically like, things one is interested in. You can make your top 10 as in your top 10 movies. Right. We rather right. keep those for the actual suggest area where others can then upvote and downvote and then spawn a video out of it. The best way, I mean, the way we'd like you guys to use it, but you guys are in the driver's seat, you're gonna tell us how you're mm. gonna use it, is for it to be things you're interested in. Like I said, I would write 1980s hard rock, <laughs> uh, history, uh, business, entrepreneurship, whatever, food, uh, you know, and, and travel and whatever, other useless and interesting things to different people. So the idea there is that we would then use that tool and if we are doing something on military planes, we would search, you know, Watch Mojo users who said they're interested in military planes. And if we see that Joe Smith 45 is into planes, we would then send you one email. We would not spam you, we would just send you one email saying, look, we're working on this project. Do you want to contribute before and help us make a better list instead of bash us afterwards because mm -hmm. we showed one thing when we describe. I'm sure, another. some people will just want to bash us after. That's fine, and you should do that. That's why we, you know, that's why we get better and better because we take your, we take all the feedback, good and Speaking bad. Speaking of feedback, um, redos of old videos. I know we've done a few reduxes in the past, like where we redo a top ten to add new movies or to change up the the ranking. Or for example, we redid Matthew McConaughey's top ten because he did like. I don't know, seven new movies that were way better than his old ones? Yeah, so that one we, we redux because just of recency. Sometimes it's for feedback. If we see in the comments that something just was off, we have no problem uh, if it makes sense to update it. Other times it's just length, like our videos used to be three, four minutes, now they're 10 minutes, so that's another reason. Um, and oh, the, the mother of all reasons is HD. Mm -hmm. So we've in the past addressed why most of our clips are not in HD, and that's really because not all of the source footage is in HD. That's kind of like the quick, one side of the, the, the equation. The other one is that, as many of you know who actually are in video production, to compress, edit, publish, render, export, and all that, like 10, 20 videos that are HD, we would basically be doing one video a week instead of four or five a day. So as we've expanded and invested heavily in the team, we've also expanded and um, invested in equipment and hardware and software and a lot of black voodoo to allow <laughs> us to start publishing. We're gonna basically upgrade a lot of our uh, new videos to uh, 720 and over time to 1080. So that's the big that's news right. as well. I just HD watched clips one are coming. in HD and it was very cool. What was it on? Uh, the top 10 moments from the Matrix trilogy okay. is coming up and it was very slick. Um, so as you know, we always love to hear your comments and your input on everything. So head over to the Suggest page and help us out on these ones. Top 10 fictional schools in video games, top 10 handcuffed movie characters, and top 10 remixes better than the original song. I'm assuming we're gonna skip porn for handcuffed movie characters. I'm pretty sure we're not yeah. gonna include porn, although there's always <laughs> hope, I guess. Uh, no, um, I also think that top 10 remixes better than the original song is gonna be way too subjective. Mm. Um, yeah, think I think of, when we've done stuff like that in the past, we've just done like more well-known or something like that. Yeah, because I could just think of like techno remixes, that there's some who like techno music that would love that, but then others are like, blasphemy, this is crap. So I think it'll probably be better known, we'll see. What are you working on? I am working on top 10 portrayals of Superman. What's your favorite one? <laughs> Dean Cain. I could see that. I mean, it's not the <laughs> classic, but No, sure. do you have a Superman? I mean, I stick to the original. I think, how could you not? That's like the... Like George Reeves? No, or no, no, Christopher, Christopher yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you working on? I'm, okay, so it's not so much that I'm working on it, I'm eating this. No, um, it's, <laughs> I am kind of shepherding to make sure we don't make a big uh, F up. It's, so we're considering doing top 10 Asian dishes, which really prompts two questions. Mm -hmm. One is, is this for the North American palate, right. or is this for like the authentic? I remember Anthony Bourdain saying how 
Koreans have basically given North America the one finger salute in the context of we're not going to change our cuisine for you if you're going to come eat Korean food it's going to be more or less the way we would eat it back home whereas when you think of Chinese and Thai and all that it's definitely appeals to a North American audience and then the other one is should we do dishes or should we just do cuisine like just right Cantonese session that would, I think that'd Thai. be cool uh, yeah do you have a favorite I like it all. It's mood. I like <laughs> Japanese. I like Thai. I love both Szechuan and Cantonese. Yeah, Szechuan. Just, all, just more of everything. It's good. I love food. Anyway, uh, so moving on. This is the portion of the show where we would normally announce the contest winner from last week. However, as mentioned, we are uh, in the future or the past or I don't even know. So we do not have a winner because the show has, last week's show hasn't aired yet. Anyway. <laughs> We're recording but, this yeah. Friday morning when you're going to see the episode with Dan. It's yeah, not that you got all that. So anyway, oh, so anyway, the spring contest will be announced next week along with the winner of this week's contest. Uh, before we get to that, though, we have to talk about Ash and his online mm, faux pas, let's say. Um, so for years, he's been sending emails out with winky faces, so like semicolon and then close parentheses. Thinking that it was a smile. Thinking. <laughs> so you can imagine uh, how that could be construed as super creepy sometimes. Why don't you tell them how? Well, yeah, basically for 15 years, all of my media career, I've just basically been too lazy to use shift, you know, colon. So I've been sending out winky faces when I was trying to put a smiley face. And that makes things very awkward or confusing when I think of it. Like when we were planning our Christmas party, I was emailing the restaurant owner who happens to be gay, not that there's anything wrong with that, of course, saying, hey, we'd like a special menu because we had a great year, we want to celebrate. So when the restaurant's closed or when it's not very busy, <laughs> how about if I come over <laughs> and we discuss the menu? We're not hard to please. By I'm candlelight sure. with a glass of wine. There you go. And with a, with a smiley face, that just means we're not going to be difficult, you know, whatever you recommend. With a winky face, very, very different connotation. This week, our colleague Angela asked me if I wanted to go join you guys at a restaurant and I was super busy I had to rush to see uh, I think our accountants and I wrote uh, no and it's a shame because I instead of saying I love that restaurant I wrote because I love you and then I said so sorry I meant the restaurant <laughs> again instead of smiley face I put a winky face which again Angela's probably very confused <laughs> and, and uh, very awkward around me. And then last but not least, so over the years, I get a lot of Mojoholics who ask me, are there job openings <laughs> at, at, at the company? And some of them, I guess, are not in Montreal and underage. Uh, so I say, yes, of course there are job openings in Montreal, but you have to be 18. Again, smiley face <laughs> would just mean something Winky face basically means that the investigative reporters of Dateline might walk in that door at any moment. So, right. I've learned my lesson and uh, I've had all these flashbacks <laughs> to very awkward, confusing emails. So, to that end, this week's contest, tweet us a message about your most awkward social media or online communication awkwardness or faux pas. Do you have one so I don't just I feel stupid and awkward I can't awkward think of one off the top of my head. I I'm, think you're lying. I, no, I, re I really don't. I believe you. Oh, no, I do, but I don't want to talk about it. Talk about <laughs> I don't. I'll tell you later. Um, anyway. I'll find out and I'll show it to you guys. <laughs> don't forget the hashtag WM question or else we won't be able to find it. And next week we will announce the winner of that and of the spring contest from last week. And next time I'm on, I might be in an orange jumpsuit and as the camera zooms out, I'll be in prison explaining that it was all a Chris Hansen will be there. Anyway, so this is the portion of the show where we will talk about the comment of the week. And this week it was from Alexi503 on top 10 girl groups of all time. Number one should have been One Direction. Womp womp. <laughs> Good joke. Got a lot of upvotes. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and see you next time.